Today we are going to examine the claims of the proposed class settlement. The topics of slides and discussions are about a legal matter. None of the information provided is an official legal opinion or any kind of offer to provide legal advice. It is extremely important that you review this information with your attorneys so you understand the ramifications of this preliminary approved settlement before the judge makes a final decision. This presentation will examine the statements of claims from point seven as well as the fine print of the new contract. But before we begin, let's start with a recap. This settlement is from employee misclassification lawsuits that were filed in these three states starting back in 2013. Do you remember why lawsuits were filed? Plus out of orders, service frequency standards, route rides, ticket count, planogram compliance. Basically, Pepper Firm treating distributors like employees without the benefits. To be clear, POAA does not object to Pepperidge Farm paying distributors and settling the employee misclassification lawsuit. POAA objects to Pepperidge Farm dangling that money to hook distributors to accept a new radically different contract. Remember, the devil is in the details, and you and your attorney should do a side-by-side -side comparison of your current contract and the proposed contract you will be receiving. Remember that the notice was written by the class attorneys who will only benefit financially when this settlement receives final approval. So keep that in mind while reading the claims. In its entirety, including distributors receiving a new contract, POAA believes the settlement isn't fair, reasonable, or adequate. But first and foremost, there is no valid reason for a change of contract when the entire scope of the lawsuit dealt with employee misclassification. Don't be fooled. Our current contracts are much stronger and offer more protections than the proposed contract. When viewing the new proposed contract, the class attorneys make several claims that appear beneficial to the distributor at first glance. But using experience as our guide, a critical eye will see that this is nothing more than an illusion. Here is an example of what I mean. What is a territory? The area in geographic terms that is assigned to a person or agent. It is found in several places in our current contract. The title page in the definitions of the contract, and Schedule A, which is a written definition of the geographic territory. Why is this important? Pepperidge Farm reinterpreted the word territory and the phrase, or any portion from paragraph 20 of the Blue 2001 contract, to mean a channel such as a club store to do a forced buyback program of snack distributors' most profitable accounts. Remember that we own geographic territories, not accounts or stores. If Pepperidge Farm could reinterpret the word territory in our current contracts, what could they exploit in the revised version? Again, keep in mind that this notice was written by the class attorneys who will be rewarded over $5.5 million. And the $22.5 million that Pepperidge Farm is spending just to have this case go away is just a fraction of the total exposure of cost if this case were litigated to conclusion. While the settlement amount seems large to the average person, it represents only 1.1% of Pepperidge Farm annual sales. Point seven of the notice claims the revised or amended consignment agreement provides current distributors in California, Massachusetts, and Illinois with new rights and makes clear Pepperidge Farm does not exercise control over the manner and means by which current distributors perform service through the addition or subtraction of numerous contractual provisions. What the notice fails to mention are the rights that distributors are forfeiting and the rights that Pepperidge Farm is gaining. Other than the ability to sell to another ID and the removal of certain termination clauses, the so-called new rights are either irrelevant or can be reinterpreted just like the word territory in paragraph 20 of the Blue 2001 contract. This proposed contract omits several items that are covered in our videos, but most important, the new contract doesn't state how distributors are paid and the percentage. There is no Schedule B. The association is concerned that many won't read past the do nothing and get paid page found at the beginning of the notice. Or take the proposed contract 
and your current contract to a contract attorney for a proper evaluation. That is why POAA hired Fox Rothschild to evaluate the contract and file objections to being forced to accept the new contract on behalf of distributors. POAA also produced several videos on the flaws of the contract and a great business 101 video called Context. The video, Claims of the Proposed Class Action Settlement, is a 20-minute presentation that debunks several of the so-called advantages to distributors from the notice. Ten short three-minute videos from their presentation dealing with specific points are also available and can be shared. These videos can be accessed from our YouTube channel or at our website www.teampoaa.org slash class action. Because class counsel denied a two-week extension on members objecting to the new contract, it is important that you let Fox Rothschild file your objection no later than December 16th. You can receive a form by emailing legal at teampoaa.org. The judge has set the evidentiary hearing for Monday, February 24th in Los Angeles, California. You should make plans to attend the first day of the hearing as it was explained to the judge that most IDs are independent operators and can't afford to miss work. Also, the judge would like to read letters or emails on why distributors are objecting to the new contract. Because you need to opt into the settlement to file an objection, the judge will allow those who objected to the contract provision to change their vote when he rules.